Hello designers, it's Henry again. Um, this video is just going to run through the basics of electrical theory. Really, really, really rudimentary basics. Um, so it's primarily aimed at product design students who might want to include uh, batteries and lights, LEDs, that kind of thing, solar panels. Really kind of basic, just power delivery circuits without going into the whole electronic side of things. Um, so we're going to cover a bit of the, the electrical theory, understand really rudimentary terms so you can specify correctly on your uh, NEA. So um, first of all, let's let's cover the basics. So it's important to know what you're talking about. Um, and you might have come across uh, volts, amps and watts. You might have come across ohms, resistors as well. But in this uh, instance I'm just going to co uh, focus on these these three so what are they voltage um, that is the fixed amount of uh, electrical potential uh, a system has so uh, think of it like pressure in a in a water system um, <clears throat> now you'll get a 1.5 volt battery and so long as it's got enough energy inside it to deliver that rated amount it will deliver 1.5 volts um, if you don't have a wire connected to that battery it is still 1.5 volts and then when you connect it into a circuit it's still until it runs out 1.5 volts um, now current is the variable thing depending on how much load or how smoothly and effortlessly those electrons go from um, one pole to the other so um, if you've got a big fat wire and stuck it between the two terminals of the battery you're allowing all of the current to go through as much current that battery allows um, so it'll get really really hot all of that energy will be spent that's what's called a short circuit uh, modern lithium ion lithium poly polymer batteries like these don't like being short circuited at all they, they get very hot themselves and can catch fire so it's important to understand um, the dangers in using lithium ion batteries and short circuiting is a big problem now if you've got a thin wire it's got a high resistance if it's a very very thin wire, and that's almost like a kind of kink in a hose it will just stop that pressure uh, or rather the flow um, flowing from one end to the other end of the circuit so current is measured in amps and it's referred to with I um, and then power in watts is the combination of both so you times the two together so you can see this triangle you can work out the power from times in the volts and the amps you can work out the amps from dividing uh, dividing voltage out of power and vice versa for volts okay so if you're going to look at a battery like this you might notice these numbers on here so this is a common type of modern lithium ion battery shaped like an AA battery but it's quite a bit bigger than that and you'll find them in all manner of electronic and electrical items even um, electric cars use thousands of these connected together um, now you notice here we've got this and this amount here we, we've established it's 3.6 volts one cell um, it says here milliamp hours now what does that mean that's the same as 3.5 amp hours that means if you were to connect a circuit that draws 3.5 amps this battery will last for an hour as long as it's at the right voltage um, that also means if you ran it for one amp, uh, sorry if you ran it at one amp so you drew one amp of current it will last um, 3.5 hours so you can see the relation there so it's not milliamps per hour is milliamps for an hour milliamps times an hour so this is basically the measurement of capacity okay um, now as you can see from the last thing if we times 3.6 volts with 3.5 amps we get 12.6 watts hours so if I had a one watt LED in theory I could run this uh, for 12.6 hours however you need to look at um, the fact that the voltage of the LED might be slightly different and we might have other things like resistors protect that LED um, now an LED for example 
doesn't really have much resistance in it so it will allow loads of energy to flow through it and damage itself so you do actually need to put a little tiny resistor in series with one of these even though a lot of leds uh, are close to 3.6 volts by the way this is also um this is the rated amount of one of these cells but they can when they're fully charged they can be as high as four volts and then go down to about two and a half volts so there is quite a lot of leeway in, in provision of um, voltage in these things, which can be an issue. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Understanding milliamp hours, amp hours, watt hours. Uh, it's quite an important thing when choosing a battery. Now the other thing to bear in mind is, and I'll demonstrate here, what happens if you put three of these joined together in what's called series. So the positive of one of these connects to the negative of the next one and the positive of that connects to the and so on in daisy chain together now when you uh, run a circuit with three of these 18650 batteries in series um, the voltages get added up so we, here we've got a system that is 10.8 volts here uh, when they're connected in parallel the voltage is the same so it stays 3.6 volts However, um, in this case, the milliamp hours are the same on each one. They're just giving more pressure, some more voltage at this. So you still get, if you're going to use three of these batteries here, you're still going to get 3.5 amp hours um, times 10.5, 10.8 uh, volts. You're going to have about 35 watt hours. So you could have something that is 35 watts running for an hour, theoretically, by the way. It's important also to remember um, it's probably not a good idea to drain a battery to its full rating. Um, depends on the quality of a battery, but you might find if you if you really do drain it down to this amount, well, first thing, the voltage is going to get lower and lower um, when you're not even close to this. But if you really do exhaust all of the, the watt hours from this, you might even damage it. So depending on the... Um, uh, quality of the battery as well so obviously some cheap knockoff batteries might be rated at this but actually in real life you probably don't want to run them for that much because you'll damage them um so yeah series in parallel these in parallel they're all the same 3.6 volts but those uh amps add up uh, the capacity adds up so this is a way of making a long life system if you want something to last quite a long time whereas this will bump up the voltage so you can use a higher voltage system uh, and then when you're looking at the load it's pretty much the same thing so a 3.6 volt supply where you've got three identical loads the same they're all going to be using 1.2 volts each now some people who are doing uh, slightly more advanced stuff in design engineering will notice potential dividers these are all sharing that potential which is Another name for voltage. Um, and then if you've got parallel things, they're all going to be using 3.6 volts across each other. And they're going to be using three times as much current as one of them. Okay, so it's important to get your head around these basic concepts when looking at specifying something. Now, I mentioned those 18650 batteries. Uh, they're a commonly found thing. And they're quite often added up in parallel to double up, triple up the voltage. So you might find a drill battery. Um, I can't remember offhand, but an 18 volt drill battery is probably got about six of these in series. Bearing in mind, they're going to average out at about three volts, maybe. Uh, and there might be a voltage limiter to just cut, cut it down to three volts or whatever it's set at. And those strings of batteries so the, the uh, six batteries in series might be connected together in parallel themselves to give more capacity so you might find a, an 18 volt drill battery which is rated at I mean some of the new ones are six amp power so it's ch chances are it's going to be six of these lined up in series to make 18 volts and then those two lines of six connected in parallel to give it six, six amp hours okay um, 
so yeah common form of battery this this 18650 uh you'll get different shapes of lithium ion battery of course you know the really slim ones you find in the mobile phone for example but these are a very common and quite uh affordable battery to use um so you might be looking at um uh a one watt led let's have a look one of these no helps if I have pages already up um, well let's look at the types of LEDs you might use um, now these are the traditional kind of instrumental um, uh, LEDs by instrumental I mean they're just just uh, signal LEDs so just dim light which shows some things on uh, very useful for kind of circuits that will just give a bit of feedback to the user have an output by having a light on but it's not going to illuminate much um towards the mill uh this turn of a millennium they, they did begin to get better and actually begin to get remotely useful for illuminating something uh and then along came these these what are called cob sometimes uh or cree as a make um of really really bright leds and they're the ones we're familiar with today um, they've got a slightly yellow colored thing like that now these quite often let's look at this one here uh, they're gonna have a data sheet with them and there's a lot of info that uh, at a level you're not going to need to know too much about the um, various things so let's have a look now first of all they're often given this number here which is a kind of measure of color um, in the intensity so uh, I don't know offhand what it is but this is basically whether it's warm white or cool white or something like that uh, you can see here it's 10 watts as well so it's quite a powerful little LED um, let's have a look here we go so this one is actually rated at 29 volts, which is quite a lot uh, compared to a lot of the volts that uh, LEDs you might be using. These kind of, uh, well, the smaller versions of these, a lot of them do run at 3.5 volts. Now, like I said, if you give it 3.7 volts or 4 volts from a, a fully charged battery, it's going to take it. Um, but it's rated at 3.5, so it won't last as long, even if you just give it a little bit too much voltage. Um, so quite often, a bit like with this example here, uh, you'll find a little resistor in series. So it'll just take some of that voltage off. Um, it'll eat up some of that voltage, and it'll get warm from it, and then the LED uses the rest of it. It's not very efficient. If you want to use something battery-powered, that is uh, long lasting obviously if you do specify a torch and a battery you don't want to kind of waste energy on, on warm resistors um, so in that case we use these little things called voltage regulators and what that will do is you've got uh, the positive on one side goes to the battery uh, so that will take in the 4.2 down to 2 volts of the 18650 uh, but it will always give out 3.5 oh, so long as this is above 3.5 I should say so as long as this is higher than that, it'll give out a steady 3.5 volts. And that will just make the battery a lot safer. I mean, the, the LED will just run it a lot safer, uh, not burn out after 30 hours or something. Uh, and then the last pin is the negative. So, so they're both, if I were to draw that quickly in Circuit Wizard, you can imagine, um, let's say this is our LED. So I'll just get rid of this if I can. No, I'm not very good at using a trackpad. Right, so if you imagine um, we don't have these in uh, in the presets here, so we're just going to have to use something with three pins, in which case a transistor. Um, so ignore the symbol, it's wrong, but imagine uh, this is your input voltage this is your ground and this is your output voltage so it would be something like that of course like i said that's wrong ignore the fact that we've got a transistor there but a voltage regulator uh, can regulate that that 
energy just so that it doesn't pop the uh, LED. Um, now, a lot of you specify that you're going to want to have a, a charger as well. Um, being product designers, there's no harm in get, leaving that to the electrical engineers to uh, specify. And, and this is what happens all the time in industry. So uh, you could just go onto uh, Google or eBay or something like that, type in the type of battery you're going to use, in this case, that one. Uh, and then you'll find these printed circuit boards that have got all of the, or they, they might be based on one of these chips. Now, what they do is they, when you're recharging a, a lithium ion battery, um, you again, another danger with it is not to feed it too much voltage, um, especially a higher voltage, because quite often they'll charge quickly if you give them a higher voltage. Um, but if you keep giving them a higher voltage once they're fully charged, Again, they get hot and they can catch fire. Um, you've probably all heard of that Samsung phone that got recalled. They do sometimes make mistakes or just some slight uh, manufacturing defect if there's a short circuit or something like that. So you do need to be quite careful um, with 18650 or any lithium ion battery. Um, so there's no harm in buying a little chip like that, which will um, do all the workings for you to be able to charge your battery um obviously you need to know what kind of voltage in and what voltage out etc etc uh which is why it's really useful to know the terminology um you might want to use a solar panel for example so here we've got a one watt solar panel um peak voltage is 5.5 volts so if you face it in direct sun hot sunny summertime uh, midday you might just about get 5.5 volts just about and then the current it will deliver is only a, a puny little 170 milliamps um so you hopefully just understanding the the combination of the two you could if you lowered this voltage you could get more current out of it because uh assuming you can get that same one watt um, there are clever ways of kind of adjusting it. It might be a long-winded way by having alternating current and transformers or something, but even just having um, things in series or parallel is quite a good way of just kind of sharing uh, one or the other. So, yeah, you can see this is not a very big L uh, solar panel. It's only uh, 8 by 10 centimetres, so it's not going to charge something like let's say 5.5 volts is probably a decent amount to put into your um uh, charging circuit by the way these are also called bms battery management system okay so like i say quite often they will want a bigger about voltage than the battery is rated at because it will just curb it off off as that uh battery gets charged up so let's assume that this solar panel with its five volts uh, is up to the standard now if it's only going to give you 170 milliamps uh, at any you know in its full whack um, it's going to take quite a long time to charge up to this one here so we can see this one if it gives three three thousand five hundred milliamps for an hour um then trickling it up 107 assuming you charge it at the same speed as it discharges which is not the case but just getting your head around the kind of ballpark ideas it might take you 20 hours to charge it up with the uh, solar panel in broad daylight that is so that might be quite a small solar panel to use now I know anyone who's watching on YouTube says yeah that's not right because obviously the charging amount is is going to be quite a variable amount it will be like an exponential curve the amount of energy it gets fed will t tail off as it gets to 80 or 90 percent um so yeah what I just said is not correct but it's in a ballpark and when you're using product design just to get your head around the figures there's no harm in just kind of setting yourself a rough ballpark in the first place to be able to understand what kind of uh, input and output voltages and currents you're talking about. 
Okay, so it's a very kind of vague uh, video that just hopefully gives some, some core knowledge to a lot of students who might be looking at using batteries and um, LEDs or motors or something like that. Just to understand the difference between volts, amps and watts. That's really the main thing, but also just to kind of get in the right ballpark of what kind of battery you're going to use. If you're going to have a one watt LED camping torch, which is a nice bright LED, um, you can just by using these calculations just specify it will last for three and a half hours or something like that with one of these batteries okay so hopefully that is a useful video for you um give us a shout on teams or email me uh if you've got any questions thank you very much